The Forest Behind Our House by user Wispified, posted to r slash paranormal. When I was eight years old when we first moved into the house on the edge of the forest, my parents had their doubts about buying the house. It had a backyard that was bordered by the forest, and they had concerns about wild animals getting into our bins or hurting our dogs and they were worried one of us might go too far into the trees and get lost. But it was cheap. My dad liked the seclusion. My mom loved the house itself, and my siblings and I were excited about playing in the backyard and exploring the forest. Our first sign that something wasn't right was that our dogs were absolutely terrified of the forest. They never went in there for any reason, if a toy they'd been playing with found its way past the tree line, they would refuse to retrieve it. And when one of us went in, they would pace anxiously until we returned. On occasion, we would notice the dog staring at a spot in the forest in obvious distress, sometimes growling or barking, but we could never see anything there. My brother once carried one of the dogs into the trees just to show her there was nothing to be scared of. But she wriggled out of his grip and sprinted into the house in a panic. If we were in the backyard when it was getting dark, we sometimes heard noises, like somebody was walking through the forest, sticks crunching underfoot, branches being pushed aside. If we called out, there was no response. But if we shined a flashlight around, we would occasionally catch a glimpse for just a split second of something that we would swear looked like a person walking around in the dark. My parents quickly banned us from entering the forest at all after dark, and even during the day, we weren't allowed to go out of sight of the house. My sister's bedroom window looked out at the backyard and the forest beyond, and she remembers looking out her window one night and seeing a shadowy figure standing right at the edge of the backyard. She said there was something wrong with it, like it wasn't quite standing on the ground, and it was a little too tall to be a person, and it was sort of distorted. She was convinced it was staring at her. She called for our dad, saying there was a man in the yard staring through her window, and when he ran outside to chase off whoever it was, she continued to watch the figure. It didn't move away, but when the light from our dad's flashlight passed over it, it suddenly just wasn't there anymore. We regularly heard knocking at the back door at night, with no one ever there. Our parents thought it was teenagers playing pranks and stopped bothering to even open the door. Until one rainy night, when the knocking was persistent and agitated, my mom pointed out that there might be somebody needing shelter from the heavy rain outside. But when she opened the door, not only was there no one there, but there were no wet footprints on the porch. The knocking continued the whole time we lived there. It would happen several times in the span of a few weeks, then stop for months, and then it would start up again. My parents eventually installed a security camera, and there was never anyone at the door. The camera wasn't all useless, though. About three years into living there, my brother started having night terrors and sleepwalking. When he went sleepwalking, he would always go out the back door and start walking toward the forest. My mom, being a light sleeper, would hear the door open and would run out to get him before he ever made it into the forest. After the third or fourth time it happened, my brother asked to see the camera footage because he wanted to see how he looked when sleepwalking. I guess he thought it would be funny. But what we saw on that tape was anything but funny. The footage showed him walking out onto the porch, 
then pausing as if listening to something, then shaking his head, but then reluctantly walking forward with an arm out, as if being pulled or forcefully guided by something that we couldn't see. One evening, my dad was in the backyard, and he heard my sister calling him from the forest. It seemed she was in distress, thinking that she had gone exploring in the forest and fallen and hurt herself. He ran in and started calling to her, but he quickly realized it was far too dark to see her, and he couldn't pinpoint where exactly her voice was coming from. He told her to wait where she was while he grabbed a flashlight. When he ran back into the house for the flashlight, he saw my sister inside, safe and completely unconcerned. At the time, my dad hadn't told us about hearing my sister's voice in the forest, so when I heard my mom's voice coming from the forest months later, while I was outside with the dogs one evening, I didn't question it, despite the fact that I had seen my mom inside recently and hadn't noticed her walk past me. My mom was calling me, saying that she had gotten her sweater caught in some branches and needed me to come in and help her. As I walked in, the dogs started barking, alerting my dad, who saw me through the window wandering into the forest. He came outside and called to me, and I said that I was just helping mom. He yelled back that mom was inside and I needed to run back to the house as fast as I could, which I did. After this, my parents had a fence built around the backyard and started looking for a new home. In the time between the fence being built and us moving out, it got worse, way worse. We would hear the knocking at the door more regularly, as well as tapping on the windows, as if somebody was walking the perimeter of the house and trying every entrance they could. We would often hear scratching and scraping sounds on the fence and voices beyond it. My brother's night terrors got more frequent, and one night my mom didn't hear the door open when he went sleepwalking, and he woke up, standing at the fence, staring into the forest, with the dogs barking at him. The last morning we spent there, less than four years after we moved in, we woke up to find the back door fully open, and the security camera footage showed it slowly swing open on its own, with nobody and nothing nearby. Since moving out, my brother's sleepwalking has stopped, although he still gets night terrors, and he suffers from pretty severe anxiety. A few nights ago, he called me out of the blue, and after a bit of small talk, he asked me if I think the door being opened that final night means that whatever was out there finally got in. He was trying to make light of it, saying he was just getting into the spirit of Halloween, joking about how maybe we should all get exercised just in case something latched onto us all those years ago. But I don't think it's a joke. I think he's deeply bothered by everything that happened. I know I still am, at least a little. I still get nervous around dark, wooded areas. I don't know what I think was out there in the forest behind our house at night, tapping on our windows and knocking on our door. But I get the feeling that, given the chance, it would have swallowed us whole. Something Shoved Me Backwards by Drama and a Headache Posted to r slash paranormal in a comment When I was little, I darted out into the parking lot and my mom couldn't react in time to grab me. There was a car coming and later my mom said that it felt like watching a horror movie. Then, according to her, something that she couldn't see shoved me backwards into her arms. She said I couldn't have just fallen, because I fell backwards while running forward, and it looked like somebody had literally shoved me. 
my momentum was going in the opposite direction, so even if I had tripped, I wouldn't have fallen backwards. She said it took her about five minutes to stop crying and that at the time, I was just super confused because I didn't realize the magnitude of what had happened. In hindsight, I think maybe I had a guardian angel or something. I don't know. Someone or something answered my son. By user OKNobody3068, posted to r slash Backwoods Creepy. This happened Easter of last year. My husband's family owns an old farm with a large property with mountains, a lake, and the woods. No one lives on the farm anymore, so we use it as a holiday residence. This is in West Norway. So fjords and mountains and lots of red deer all over the place. No neighbors and no animals except wild ones. There are old ruins from the Viking Age, about 500 meters from the house, nearby the lake. Much unknown history, and I find the forest very eerie. I'm Norwegian, and my ex, the father of my kids, is Canadian. He is not so much around anymore, and my daughter, who's 10 years old, is very fond of horror movies. My son, who's nine years old, also likes a good scare. To help them not forget their Canadian culture, I told them about the Wendigo. This was in the car on our way to the West for the Easter holiday, since there's so many deer out there. I told them a story that I have read about Wendigo mimicking kitten sounds, and I told them that these Norwegian mountains are the same as the Appalachians before the continents split up, and maybe that's why they can be so eerie. The second day there, we cut down some small trees outside the house. The kids and I dragged the branches over a small field and tossed them down a hill. This hill is where the forest begins, and it's also the path down to the lake. My husband at the time was in the garage, fixing the chainsaw. This is in the complete opposite direction. As we took a break by the tree line, my son, with my Wendigo story in mind, starts to make a special cartoonish cat meow that he thinks is funny into the forest. He kept going about six to nine times before I finally told him to knock it off and get back to helping us with the branches. We turned around and there was a very clear meow coming from the bottom of the hill. It sounded exactly like my son's meowing and it wasn't my son. He stood right beside me and it was his voice and his characteristic mirror mirror. We shrugged it off as someone hiking, answering the meowing, and I didn't want to scare the kids for real, and didn't remind them that it was private land, and that nobody except us goes down there. The only walkable path is through our garden and small field. We got up to the garage and told my husband, and went inside for lunch. He was just like, well, lots of spirits in these woods, I guess and we didn't talk about it again. He's a man of few words and not easily scared. He grew up on the farm every vacation. He knows the land well, and he thinks it's mystical but not scary. My husband reminded me of the meowing in the car on our way there this Easter. We still can't figure out a rational explanation for that either. So we just landed on the forest spirits or a really demented, strange fox. For now, I'm just going to assume there was a raven. But I've heard raven mimic things like that, and this didn't sound like that at all. It literally sounded like somebody had recorded my son and played it back.
probably the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me. Posted to r slash paranormal by user Enrique LG 97 I live in a Venezuelan island in the Caribbean called Margarita. Been here for most of my life. A lot of people here are still very rooted to the original human experience. Some aren't even into technology. They're just about nature, fishing, drinking with neighbors on the beach, celebrating their religious beliefs, what you would find people doing 50, 60 years back. Maybe due to their disconnection to the digital world, it is very common to find people with spiritual gifts. I mean, witches, clairvoyants, seers, you name it. I've never surrounded myself with those kind of people, nor will I. But I just had this experience a few weeks ago, and I just had my mind blown. It was a Monday at 11 p.m. I was at the beach with a pal and a group of girls that were visiting the island for the first time. We were having a nice time, had a couple of beers, until one of the girls asked me if I had any cigarettes. I smoke sometimes, but I didn't have any cigarettes on me. Plus, finding any bar or shop open at 11 o'clock on a Monday night is basically an impossible task, though I still tried. The guy that was watching the cars told me he'd take me to a place if I bought him half a pack, and I agreed. We got to the place a few blocks down the road. I walked in and asked the cashier for two packs of Marlboro. There was a woman sitting in the bar, maybe in her 50s, she had piercing blue eyes and was probably a little drunk, as she was drinking rum and her cheeks were super red. This is where it gets creepy. She greeted me and we started talking about how Marlboro worked better than other brands of cigarettes. She then looked me dead in the eye and told me, even though I live here on this island, I wasn't born here, which is actually true. She told me I had something latched onto me that was taking good care of me on the other side, and that's why I have survived all of my near-death experiences. It's true that I've had a few, a very close type of few. I was silent for a second and told her that if it's watching over me, then it's probably good, right? She laughed, extended her hand to shake mine, and as she shook it, she was sort of rubbing it. Her eyes went blank as she did, and that's when I felt chills all over my body. My heart started racing, and then she stood up and leaned up to me as if she wanted to tell me a secret. She said, There's an all-time buddy of yours that knows about all the good and bad stuff that happened to you. He cheers when you fail and hates it when you move up. The thing you have with you will show you who that false friend is. And end the friendship on terrible terms. Do not hesitate to do what you must. At this point, I already had my cigarettes, was scared crapless, and just wanted to get out of there. So I politely thanked her for the advice and left. The days passed, and I really didn't give it any deeper thought. Until... I had a huge fight with a friend of 10 years and blocked him everywhere, never to contact him again. To keep this short, I won't get into the details of it, but this was a friend I had helped for years who told me that I wasn't his friend for not being able to lend him money for the 999th time. It was quite a showdown though. We were pretty close to physically hurting each other. But whatever, even then, I couldn't make the connection between what that old lady at the bar told me with what had just happened, until a few minutes ago. She nailed every single detail. The timing was so on point. It's like she read my life without me even having a clue of what she was talking about. I don't know if she was a witch or whatever, but there really are forces in this world that we ignore. Stop ignoring it. Pretty much everything happens for a reason, and life gives you signs. So when it does, make sure to follow your gut and skip all the rules of society about it.
Singing in the Woods by S.H. Mazran, posted to r slash backwoods creepy. I've been getting more acclimated to camping as a solo female. I'm pretty comfortable in the woods for the most part. I feel safe and at home. This was my first time solo camping in the area I'm from, so it felt particularly special. It was a pretty rugged, remote part of WNC, camped off a gravel road, right by the creek. After having dinner by the fire, I settled into my tent, the air of early spring growing colder. As I'm trying to get cozy and drift off, I hear what I can only describe as a woman singing. I'm pretty skeptical, and I know our ears can play tricks on us. I've definitely heard things before, when there was a monotonous sound like the river, so I tried to brush it off. But it had range, it wasn't at all consistent, and it was as if there was a tune to it. At this point, I froze, holding my breath. The singing sound would stop, and then start again. I was terrified, honestly. Eventually, I had to suck it up and go outside to pee. The moon was full so I could see. Nothing there at all. Just the beautiful creek in the night. I continued to hear it for a little while longer, before a very poor sleep. That's all, nothing too crazy. But I just know what I heard, and I don't have any explanation. My son knows things he shouldn't. By user REOW2019. Posted to r slash paranormal. This is my first time posting here, so hang with me. I have four sons, my oldest is six, and he's the one that I'm curious about. Since he was very young, first learning to talk, he's occasionally said things that don't make any sense for him to know. We were on vacation with my in-laws at the beach when he was two and a half, and he had a blast in the water with my husband and I. The next day, we got up bright and early to go back, and he adamantly refused. He kept insisting that there were alligators in the water. We tried to reason with him that alligators didn't live in salt water, but he was not having it. Well, my husband had taken one of our twins, almost a year old, into the water, and they were playing. A few moments later, a man comes running from the pier, yelling at him to get out of the water and for us to get away from the water. He explained that while watching the water from the pier, he saw an alligator just beneath the water, stalking my husband from a distance. He called 911 and animal control arrived and were eventually able to locate and capture the alligator. It was eight feet long. There had been storms during the night and it was mating season. The explanation was that he was looking for a mate and had come in through a freshwater river that runs into the sea. But how could my son have known about that hours before it happened? Another time I was going outside to do yard work and he told me not to go near the bushy tree, the fig tree, because there was a rattlesnake under it. I thought it was just childhood imagination. I'm doing the yard work and I go over to that tree to see if any of the figs are ripe and I heard a rattle. I looked down and I was about three feet away from a rattlesnake and it was not happy to see me. I quickly got away as not to disturb it further and hoped it would go on its way. He shouldn't have known it was there. Another time, we were going to visit my mom and he was asleep. We hadn't told him where we were going because she had a surprise for him. We got in the car and he said, you can't go this way to grandma's because the bridge is out. We always went that way if my husband was driving and the bridge had been fully operational the day before. 
Sure enough, we get to the bridge and it's taped off with a detour sign. There is zero way he should have known because word hadn't even gotten out yet. Especially since my cousin is the local supervisor and he didn't tell anybody about it until after I called him. I honestly find this all just a little creepy, mostly because I can't logically explain it. My grandma has something interesting to say about aliens. By user Bree by day and night, posted to r slash paranormal. Today, the Area 51 thing was on the news, and my grandma, unbothered, looks at me and goes, you know, aliens landed on our local beach in the 70s. They keep their ship hidden under the sand. That's why we haven't had a hurricane since. Now listen, my grandma is a very old school, conservative, religious woman. We don't even joke around with her. When she said this, I thought maybe she was joking, but she just went right back to watching the news like she hadn't said anything to me. My aunt is one of my neighbors. So later, when I went to check my mail, I saw my aunt sitting on her lawn and I went to tell her what my grandma had said. Again, unbothered, my aunt goes, yeah, that's true. That's why part of that beach is sectioned off. I was sure that some kind of elaborate prank was going on. But later, I saw another neighbor and told them all of this craziness, and they agreed with my grandma and my aunt. I looked it up and there's a bunch of news stories of the town claiming that the reason major storms won't hit my area, even though we are in a high-risk zone for hurricanes, is because of the aliens protecting their ship. I was a paranormal tour guide by user valpal1237, posted to r slash paranormal. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, formerly known as Weston State Hospital, is a Kirkbride building that housed the mentally ill from 1864 to 1994. In 2007, it was privately purchased and has become a museum and historic location and a ghost hunting spot. It has a most unpleasant and dark history that I've regaled to thousands of people, and it pains me to be an expert on the subject. In 2021, I retired from my position as a guide and ghost hunt event manager under severe burnout. After all that I experienced there, it solidified in my mind that paranormal things that defy rational explanation do indeed happen and certain phenomenon are absolutely real, EVPs especially. It's almost October as I'm writing this and I'm feeling a little spooky. So here are a couple of strange things that I experienced in my time there. One evening while training for the job, I was on the first floor with a couple coworkers while everyone else was touring upstairs. We were just kind of killing time quietly observing the area. Light from outside was coming in through the windows, casting on the inner hall's walls. In that light, I watched the perfect silhouette of a man, from head to hip, walk through the light from left to right. I said something about it, and the three of us watched as an arm and hand moved into the light from the right side. I immediately ran into the room and began looking out of that window for somebody outside. There was no one there. At the time, the realization that from the ground to the bottom of the window is seven feet didn't even occur to me. I will never forget that crisp, clear silhouette shape for as long as I live. 
We would run experiments with a spirit box. It rapidly scans radio frequencies and are believed to be a communication device with the other side. One person would use one with noise-canceling earbuds. All they are able to hear is the radio static and blips of a few random stations. When they hear a word or a phrase, they are to say it out loud. One evening, my coworker and I ran one of these experiments in a notorious room where a murder took place in 1987. For 10 minutes, I sat and listened to nothing but radio static through the spirit box. No blips of radio, nothing except the static. I was starting to get bored, honestly, when I heard a woman's voice say, evil. So I spoke up and repeated the word, evil. Next thing I know, my coworker is shining her flashlight in my face to get my attention. I pull out the earbud and she was frantically saying, it's time to go, it's time to go. So we hauled out of the room, down the hall, down the next hall to the center section before she would even start to tell me what happened. While I was hearing nothing but static, she said she kept hearing what sounded like someone shuffling their feet and walking around just outside of the door. She said she spoke up and asked, whoever is out in the hallway, are they nice? That was when I spoke out and said, evil. In the wee hours one night, we figured it would be cool to see what would happen if we shut all the doors of the ward. One of the doors, as I was closing it, the knob twisted in my hand and I was not twisting it and was forcibly pulled closed. I stood there for several moments, opening and closing the door, trying to replicate what happened, trying to explain it. Finally, the person with me was like, what the hell are you doing? It was so weird. I had never felt invisible forces like that before. I also had three people spend the night one night and they had thermal imaging video. They set it up, pointing down the hall where we could all watch on a tablet. We thought it would be interesting to leave a device at the far end of the hall that would alarm if the field around it was disturbed. As one of the dudes walked down the hall to put it there, we could see his form on thermal imaging, clearly human shaped in colors representing heat and warmth. When he walked by one of those doorways about a quarter of the way down the ward, the shape of a head, neck, shoulders and upper body of a person in colors indicating cooler temperatures leaned and peeked out as he walked by like somebody popped out of the room for a second just to check out who was there i've never seen anything like it and i won't forget it i wish we had copy of that footage it happened a lot a guest capturing something far out and never bothering to send us a copy I'll end this long-winded post with something that absolutely changed me and that I still don't understand. I remember the exact night and time of these occurrences. That's how profound and somewhat unsettling they were. June 3rd and June 4th of 2017 at 3.40 in the morning. On June 3rd, after an hour or so of hearing a female's voice, one instance even sounded like she said my name, as well as banging around, footsteps, literal running sounds on that hardwood floor toward us, I sat quietly on the floor with a group. I started to feel dizzy, lightheaded, and just gross. I told myself it was my imagination and that I would be fine. A few minutes later, I started to feel this intense burning sensation on my lower back, just to the right of my spine. Again, I told myself that it was all in my head. The burning sensation kept amping up and getting worse and worse. I told myself that I didn't want to be that guy and say anything in front of these people, you know? Finally, it got to the point where I just had to say something. I asked my coworker with us if there was anything there. She was like, oh my gosh. There on my lower back, just to the right of my spine, was a mark that looked like a burn or an abrasion, about three to four inches long and about an inch wide. Now, I had seen other such claims made by visitors of scratch marks and the like, 
often writing them off, and the marks were always gone within an hour at most. I had visible markings on my back for almost a week. My nerves there, to this very day, often feel weird, sometimes chilled, sometimes like a skin soreness, especially whenever I think about the experience. June 4th, same part of the building, same time of night, because apparently I can't get enough. I noticed that my voice recorder had run out of memory, so I'm holding it in my right hand, using the flashlight in my left so I could see what I was doing. Suddenly, I feel a burning sensation on the underside of my right forearm. I shifted my flashlight to it. The person beside me and I watched as three welts began to appear down my arm. Needless to say, that blew my mind. It's one thing to see marks like that. It's a whole other to watch as it happens on your own skin. Like the majority of instances I've heard about, those marks were gone within about 10 to 15 minutes, no lasting effects. Scared would be the wrong word, but I have none to describe my mind frame around those events. I took a week off of work after it, just to try to process it all, and I was nervous being in that hallway for the rest of the summer. Like I said, I still don't know what to think or believe. I've got enough stories of experiences to fill a book, most likely, but I'll leave you with those for now. I will add a final note about how constantly poking around in the dark and talking about past true horrors of human experience day in and day out truly takes its toll, spiritually and emotionally. Since my resignation, my mental health and overall level of happiness has greatly improved. I used to tell people after a while that it honestly felt like I had gotten out of a toxic relationship with that place. My Girlfriend Saw My Doppelganger by Buckshot1102 Posted to r slash paranormal I will try to give as much detail as possible and keep this from going on for too long. This happened back in the summer of 2015 when I was serving in the United States Army Reserves. I was stationed in Southern Alabama in a transportation company. Sometimes my girlfriend would come with me on drill weekends and we would crash at the apartment of a friend of hers, which is where this incident took place. This particular weekend, we were in a large convoy in the middle of nowhere, on some back road, out in the sticks, well over a hundred miles from the city. This was when I got the most confusing, bizarre, and downright creepy phone call of my young life. She was in utter hysterics. She was crying and screaming, asking me why I would scare her so badly and what my problem was and asking me how I even pulled it off. After I was finally able to calm her down, this is the story she relayed to me. Sometime that afternoon, her friend was at work and she was at the apartment by herself. Suddenly there was a loud bang on the door, not a knock, several loud violent bangs. After looking through the peephole, she saw me, but she said there was something off. She said that I was wearing my army uniform and that it looked like me, but that I had this very angry, aggravated look on my face. She opened the door wondering why I was home so early. And apparently, without saying a word, I angrily blew past her, shoulder checking her into a wall, and then quickly walked down the hall taking a left into the bedroom and slamming the door behind me so hard that the whole place shook. She was of course very alarmed, confused about why I was home so early, and really upset about how I was treating her. She couldn't figure out why I was in such an agitated state. That is so out of character for me. I'm not a violent guy at all. On top of that, if something did happen to set me off, she would have been the first to hear about it. So she's walking behind me, trying to get some information out of me, and she opens the bedroom door behind me. 
and sees the closet door slam shut. She proceeds to run over to see what I was doing in her friend's closet and claims that when she opened the door, it was completely empty. And that was when she had a panic attack and called me. Imagine my shock and confusion hearing that story, knowing that I was well over a hundred miles away at the time. She finally believed me after I sent her a photo with my current GPS location, which only served to freak her out even more. I thought that there must be some kind of rational explanation for what she saw. I'll be honest, she did smoke a little devil's lettuce from time to time, but at the time I know that she was sober. She didn't mess around with anything harder than that, and she didn't drink. She had no mental illnesses of any kind, so I don't know. Over the years since that happened, I came to learn about doppelgangers. I don't know what they mean, what they represent, or why they come around. All I know is that they're creepy as hell, and a girl I dated for several years came face to face with mine. And I put the fear of God into the poor girl. Take from this story what you want, I honestly don't care if anyone believes it or not. I just wanted to get it off my chest. Doppelganger or Dimensional Rib by Marching Mike Posted to r slash paranormal A few years ago, my family decided to host my cousin's sweet 16 birthday party at a local church, renting out the event room. The party went off without a hitch, and by the time we were cleaning things up, it had gotten dark out. I was with my other cousin, not the birthday girl, moving boxes of party decorations out to the car. We both stood behind the car, putting the boxes in the trunk, talking about the events that went on that night. We both started to head back inside. I went around the right side of the car, and she went the long way, around the left of the car. We should have met back up at the front of the car by the hood at the same time. I fully intended to continue our conversation. Instead, I saw her at least five feet in front of me, walking quickly back into the building. I followed her back inside, trying to catch up with a quick jog, but she was walking faster than I could jog. I followed her around the corner and watched as she entered the bathroom. Ah, uh, that must be it, I thought to myself. She just really had to go to the bathroom. I stood outside the restroom waiting on her when suddenly my cousin, the one I thought I was waiting for, walked around the corner. She asked what I was doing, as we had just brought out the last boxes. I didn't even know how to reply. I needed to know who I had followed, as we should have been the only people with access to the building. I opened the door, and I looked around, and nobody was in there. I looked in the two stalls with no luck. I walked out and left with my cousin, locking the door to the building as we left. I forgot about this whole event until about a year ago, when I started getting into paranormal podcasts. A few things to note. Whoever or whatever I followed into the church looked exactly like my cousin from behind, long black hair, and shorter than me, with an athletic build. She has a recognizable silhouette, even in the dark. I saw more than its silhouette when we entered back into the building where the dim lights proved to me that it looked exactly like my cousin from behind, though it stayed about five feet ahead of me, consistently moving very quickly. It was only a quick walk, no running. I'm sure that the bathroom didn't have any other exits, and after confronting my cousin late last year, she has no memory of this event, as it didn't seem out of the ordinary for her. It's been about five years. Something I also remember was that the lights in the bathroom were motion activated, and they were already on when I opened the door to investigate. Creepy story about seeing my dad's doppelganger by Himulu 
posted to r slash paranormal. This happened when I was eight years old. I saw my dad in the bathroom drying off after a shower, but the problem is he was supposed to be in his office at the time. I asked him, uh, dad, when did you come home? He didn't say anything. I asked again and he closed the bathroom door in my face. I went from that room and didn't think much of it. 20 minutes later, my mom gave me and my little brother lunch. All three of us, my mom, my brother, and I, sat to eat lunch. I asked my mom why we weren't waiting for dad. She laughed and said, why would we? He's gonna come home late at night. I said, because dad's home? And then I explained it to her. We searched the entire house, but we never found him, because, you know, he wasn't there. Creepy, right? After eating, my little brother and I fell asleep. My mom stayed awake to watch television. I woke up to my mom's scream. I rushed to look for her. I found her standing in front of that bathroom door. She hugged me and she couldn't even talk. I looked at the bathroom and it was empty. I asked her what happened. She said that she saw dad, the dad was there. But why would he appear out of nowhere? She asked him when he came home and she said that the thing that looked like my dad made a horribly creepy face, so she screamed. In no time, I was there and the thing disappeared. Later, dad actually came home at night and we told him everything. I don't remember what we did immediately after that, but I know that not long after, we moved out. Camden's Forgotten by Max. My fascination with abandoned places led me to the old schoolhouse in Camden, a decaying relic of the past rumored to harbor a dark history. This exploration, born out of a mix of curiosity and probably arrogance, turned into a chilling encounter with the remnants of a tragic past and the vengeful spirits that lingered there. The schoolhouse, a once proud two-story structure, now stood dilapidated. It had shattered windows and graffiti covered the walls. Every time you went into it, the air just felt thick, like the building itself was mourning something. It just felt sad. I'd heard stories about the place, gruesome things that happened there and why it became abandoned restless spirits of children who apparently still wandered the halls. I still wanted to check it out though. When I stepped inside, the first thing I noticed was the oppressive silence. My footsteps echoed, and the echoes themselves seemed to disturb the place. The derelict classrooms and dusty desks, the scattered books, all of it looked frozen in time. I went further, and every time I took another step, it felt like I was even more and more uneasy. I don't really know another word for it. This sense of dread just came over me. The air turned colder, and then I heard it. The faint sound of children's laughter in the distance. At first I thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. I had heard stories about children haunting the place, and now my brain was just making up laughter, filling in the gaps, you know. Then all of a sudden, as I kept going, midway through a step, I just heard, leave. It was multiple voices in unison, and it wasn't really so much a voice as a hiss. Unfortunately, I ignored it. It was just the wind, I thought. I continued on to the school's gymnasium, and that's where the true horror of the entire schoolhouse really is, if you ask me. The walls had this childlike scrawl all over it, drawings, but that's not really what upset me. It was what the drawings depicted, scenes of violence and despair, gore. At the center of the room, 
there was a rope, or the remnants of one, swaying gently, as if disturbed by some unseen presence. This room was entirely sealed, so there shouldn't have been any wind. The whispers I'd heard earlier came back, more intense this time. This time, they transformed into screams, and I saw shadows running across the walls in the shape of children. I felt this overwhelming sense of guilt and sadness, but the emotions weren't mine. It was almost like my body was picking up on the emotional frequency of something else, like a radio station. It's hard to explain, but that was the point at which I realized I had gone too far and stayed too long. I ran out of the schoolhouse, and I heard the screams and the whispers the whole time. I didn't stop till I was well clear of the building and until everything else stopped. Outside, the atmosphere lifted, but I don't think I'll ever forget what happened there. Apparently, decades ago, there was a really tragic thing that happened there, and several children died. The details are murky, the rumors are numerous, and nobody agrees, but all anybody knows is that it was bad it was abandoned, and it should probably be left that way.